Well, hello, Lian. It's so nice to see you again, like five seconds after we finished the first video. Um, we are continuing a conversation that we started over on Lian's channel. And um, I'm so happy that you're here. Do you want to introduce yourself just really quickly who you are if somebody is stumbling across this video first? Yeah, well, thanks for having me. Um, hi, I'm Leanne from Leanne Likes. You probably heard my voice. I do a lot of voiceover um, with my channel. I am obsessed with fountain pens, inks, and paper, and uh, really happy to be here and just to have this conversation with you. Yeah, I'm so glad that you're here. We have started a conversation over on your channel, and um, we thought it would be an amazing opportunity for everybody else who is on YouTube and Instagram or just watching this to answer the same questions that we talked about as kind of a tag video. Um, we have included all the questions that we thought of in the description box below. So if you want to film your own video or share some photos of your thoughts, can you share photos of your thoughts? I don't know, of your fountain pens or holy grail pens or whatever on Instagram. We would love to see those as well. Um, so we talked about more of the history of our fountain pen journey and um, favorite inks that we had, how our, how our love for inks and pens changed in your video. And now we are going to deep dive into the um collection of side of things um i know that there is collectors but i think we both are more of the users maybe maybe we're more explorers than collectors we want to use the things that we have and so what i have been asking me lately is when is my collection completed or is there a, is it even possible to complete my fountain pen collection? Mm -hmm. Is there a number? Is this a feeling that I have about, okay, I'm completely saturated? Or when do you know that your collection is complete? And also how many fountain pens are currently in your collection so that we know where we are starting from in this discussion? Mm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's a meaty topic. Um, yes. okay. So you know what? I actually haven't really counted how many mm -hmm. pens that I have. Um, if I were just to count right now, I have three. So I have uh, these two Hurlstone uh, pen pouches mm -hmm. that I really, really love. Uh, I've got one, two, three, four, five. I've got seven in here because I've got a couple back here. Mm -hmm. And then I've got, it's a three compartment with two here where I've got them clipped. So I've got seven plus two, three, four, seven plus five, that's 12. Then I've got my Galen leather pouch. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a confessional right now. It's I'm almost confessed 12 plus five, that's 17. Mm -hmm. And then I've got this case. Um, which in my mind, ideally, I wanted my entire collection in this. That is, if this I, 20, is this a 20 pen? Yeah, pen? I think it's a 20. Two, four, six, eight. Yeah, so I've got that and that. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15. So 17 plus 15 is 32. I've got 32. And then I probably have like, I have a couple empty Caveco uh, Perkeos. Is it Caveco or Coeco? It's probably Caveco because it's uh, the V and W in Germany are basically exactly the opposite pronunciation as in in the States. Ah, which makes sense. I mean, if I'm thinking about it, even in Spanish, it's double double V, double V. So you would really pronounce the V. <laughs> but uh, no, yeah. Okay, Caveco. Great. Yeah. So I've probably got closer to 40 right now if I'm thinking about some empty ones that I don't really use I have a couple of platinum preppies I have a couple of um kakunos laying around somewhere I have a couple of perkeos laying around somewhere 
So maybe close to 40, but ideally I want to whittle it down to this. Okay. So, so you actually have a number. Yeah. But you know what? Maybe this and one of these. So then oh. I, can keep, I, I don't even know. I actually don't really have a number. I yeah. think in my mind, the idealistic part of me wants to keep everything condensed um, yeah. to 20, but I don't know if I can do that. We shall see. I have... 33 at the moment and I actually ordered one pen this morning so 34 um but I feel like I'm the same as you I have the same pen case just in a different um mm -hmm. leather and I have this was full this morning before we started talking and I decided uh to move all of my um cheaper fountain pens or the beginner fountain pens out of that pen case and into here because I I think I said it on your video I am I'm not sure that I think I'm done with all of those not done in the sense of that I'm not going to use them anymore but done in the sense of that I don't really want to add any more to this collection mm. um I'm enjoying them and I think I'm not going to sell any either because they are here for a reason, for instance, for shimmer inks and yeah, just to enjoy or explore inks in various different ways. But um, I am really enjoying the pens that I have in here more at the moment. And so I, I'm I have some in this pen cup. This is what is going to be in my currently ink rotation for March. Um, but if I put them all in here, there's three spots left. Mm. So if I'm, I, I thought about the same thing as you. So if I'm saying, okay, these are my fancy pens. These are the ones that I really love and are dear and near to my heart. Then I have three more spots left. And then I need to start um the one in one out mm -hmm. um method if that's where I'm going and I'm really very attracted to that idea at the moment mm -hmm. why why is why is that why are you so attracted to that idea um I think that's one of those I think we I mentioned it earlier too I'm so if, if I have 30 pens and I ink up or 20 and I have 10 inked every month, then I get to enjoy every pen almost every other month. I feel like that's a good amount. Then I, I it doesn't take six or seven months I, until I'm using a pen again because I have so many and I want to use to rotate through them because as I said in the beginning I'm not a collector per se I'm more of a user and so I it doesn't make sense to me to have a pen in my collection that I'm not using mm -hmm. right so and then the more pens I have the less of a chance each pen gets to actually be used mm-hmm yeah, I, I I agree with you. I, I would say, you know, I am more of the explorer, the user than I would be a collector. I, I can see the allure in being able to collect. Mm -hmm. because it, it is a lot like it is. I mean, I, I could see the allure, um, something about being able to acquire that one, yeah. you know, the, the hard to find pen, you know, um, and then to have it in your possession and to know that you can use it anytime you want it, yes. you know, if you have your very own is very alluring. Um, but I, I think I'm in a season right now where I want to explore, like, yeah. I've even thought about what if I challenged myself to use just one pen and then cycle different inks because I want to know, will this ink work well in this pen or, yes. or even to ink uh, all, you know, maybe have a selection of pens, but just ink them with one ink. With one ink. I want to see how yes. the ink behaves in each nib, right? Because that's it, what it, Maria Russell oh, uh -huh. has been doing on her channel. She's oh. shared that she had um, five Twisbees inked with the same ink 
for four weeks in February. And it was really interesting to see. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's all of those things are explorations for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, So yeah, that is what it, that, that is kind of where I am leaning towards because I want to get to know. And I think you've mentioned this too, because I'm just reminded of uh, something that you had mentioned in another video, just saying that you want to just get to know the inks, get to know the pens that you already have. Yes. Um, and, and, you know, I have to be careful. There are times like, especially at the beginning of the year, I had this like rigid idea of no more pens. I'm not buying any more. I'm not going to buy any more online. The next time I buy a fountain pen, it's going to be in a shop in person. Yes. Um, you know, and I don't want to declare that because I know I might just break it, but like yes. I, I aspire, I aspire to yes. actually hold a pen in my hand and see if I really enjoy it. And, and the slower process of thinking like, okay, if I get this pen, then what role is it playing in my collection? Is there a gap? Yes. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. I, Yeah. I think that's maybe that's also some the the problem that we why we purchase so many pens is that we don't really have the opportunity to test them in a store if it's yeah. not close by and then you just go by what you see online what other people say about this pen but we always we it's like we we notice when we have those pens in our hands that whatever the other person said doesn't ha- necessarily have to be for the same for us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, like case in point with the vanishing point, the, the matte black. I mean, I'm telling you, it was a very sleek, gorgeous pen and mm-hmm. I really wanted it. And I wanted to ink it up in a, uh, like a, a archival ink, you mm-hmm. know, just like how Lindsay Scribbles had done it. Um, And then when I tried it, it just didn't work out. And I I tried it every month thereafter and kind of forced myself to use it because it was an expensive pen because I've heard that so many people liked it, but I just, it just didn't work out for me. Um, But you're right. Like a lot of it is just seeing what looks really pretty, what looks really nice or flashy and purchasing it online because you really won't be able to know if you like it unless you actually have it in your possession. Um, But yeah, I've acquired way too many pens, I think. yeah, anyway. <laughs> so so are you are you thinking that you're going to have a number that is saying okay, this is going to stop so 20 should be the ideal number in your collection? Or are you going to make exceptions? I I think I'm going to make exceptions. But I think before that, I want to look at all of my pens and see which ones I actually don't enjoy using, Um, Mm -hmm. which ones am I kind of forcing myself to use or, uh, but you know what, I actually have to make an exception there too, because I remember um, even when something that you had mentioned, which is, you know, if I, I didn't like this pen and then all of a sudden I tried it in this ink and now I love it. It's my favorite writer. So yes. I don't want to um, easily, quickly get rid of my pens, but maybe right now um, the aim for this year isn't so much to whittle down my collection so that it fits in this case, but more of let me just explore what I have now, mm-hmm. see what I like, what I don't like. And maybe by the end of the year, I might do like a big, you know, dump, like sell, sell the pens that really haven't worked for me, even though I might have some sentimental attachment to them. I have like my very first pen. It's a, it's an all-star and I want to keep it just because it was my first pen, but I don't, I kind of have to think of it, like take it from like a bird's eye view of like, is it, do I really, will I really use this pen because I enjoy writing with it? Or am I only keeping it because it was my first pen? And is it necessary to hold on to my first pen? I don't know. Yeah. well, I mean, then it would just be a, I'm holding on to this pen because it was my first pen. And I think that's a reason enough to keep a pen, but then it doesn't necessarily have to be part of that collection because you're not going to use it to write with it anymore. Mm. Maybe. I don't know, because I have the same thing. I have I have this this Lamy Safari is the one that I used um, in high school. Wow. And 
it works. It's I've written with it so much. This is the original nib that was on there. It's super soft and <laughs> juicy. Um, and I will use it occasionally, probably, but not necessarily as part of the rotation. It's just there because I have sentimental attachment to it. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I probably won't sell it. I probably will sell any other pen first before I'm going to sell this pen, just yeah. because it's so... It's part of, it's been with me for 30 years. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's an heirloom now. It's an heirloom. Yeah, really. Yeah. I think for that very reason, I might, yeah, I'll probably keep my all-star as well. Um, and it's funny because, well, it's also, I happen to be wearing black, but my, do I have it here with me? It's uh, also black because I wanted mm -hmm. to keep it safe. So this is my first my first pen mm -hmm. um, and I the premise for also getting a black pen was I thought well you know I can ink it up with any color and you know the the aesthete the aesthetic part of me is like oh I can't put you know I can't ink uh I don't know some I don't know like sometimes I don't want the colors to clash the mm -hmm. pen body you with can't ink a green pen with an orange ink right 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 okay. or maybe maybe it could but it depends on the ink right or it depends on the orange but yeah, like with the black pen, you can ink it up with any ink and it won't clash. It'll complement, you know, but um, I do have to say, I do like the way it writes. It's a, uh, it's a fine nib, but it writes more, not, it's not as juicy. It's not like a fine medium. It's more like an EF fine. Okay. Yeah. So are you, are you matching colors with fountain pen color with your fountain pen ink? I'm saying still. Because I feel like that's an evolution of people who use fountain pens. <laughs> oh, like in the really? beginning, I feel many people, or or not, I don't know. But I feel like when you start out, you tend to match the ink with the pen. And then when you are deeper into the exploring stages, you don't really care anymore if it's the same color or if that because you want to see what it looks, what it writes in this pen, no matter if it matches or not. Right. I would say I'm still in the beginning of the exploratory phase okay. because, <laughs> um, because I'm still, uh, well, it's, it's interesting. Um, no, I mean, what do I have? So I recently got a whole bunch of inks from, um, Ian Domingo and she sent me like a whole rainbow of colors and um, I didn't really match it. Well, I put a, a bright yellow ink in this Levon, mm -hmm. which clashes. Yeah. Um, but it, it's not a good match, not because of the color and the the pen and the color of the ink not really balancing. It's more how it the flow in here. I, it doesn't really work to my. It doesn't work very well. Like lots mm -hmm. of hard starts. But I would say I'm still thinking about like, oh, I'd like to maybe put a, like a chroma shading Sailor Ink Studio, like a lavender bluish ink in okay. this one. But um, I think that's why a lot of my uh, most recent pen purchases are all black pens, actually. Okay. So you don't have to match. Yes. Okay. Yes. So I don't have to worry about matching. And I'm kind of in a like minimalistic black pen phase right now because okay. my newest one of the uh like the newest pen edition that I haven't even inked up yet it's a <laughs> it's the black uh Caveco Sport aluminum in a black body <laughs> <laughs> so I'm excited to try to ink this but I mean just just look at it it's just a black yeah uh, I mean, with silver trim like nothing fancy but it's all of your black pens <gasps> <gasps> I think I will That's I think I will yeah, so I've been in a black pen phase right now. So I don't even I don't even know if I have a black pen. Yes, I do. I have a Lamy Joy. Oh, okay. And a and I have the Jinhao X159 or something. Oh, okay. But that's all of the black pens that I own. Yeah. Yeah. I only have the cap here because I used it for my ink explorations, but this is all the black that I have. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, I think the reason why I ended up getting this is because I sold my black matte vanishing point. And oh. I thought I still liked that aesthetic. So mm -hmm. then I thought I'm just going to get, because I, 
I've been wanting a brass Caveco Sport, but just haven't really bought it yet. But then I thought this will be my vanishing point. It'll, it'll, it, this will be my black matte pen. Yeah, uh, I, that pen, the brass Caveco Sport is also on my list to try still. I have the um, Traveler's pen. You have yeah. that one too. And I actually I really like the brass. I do too. And so I'm like, oh, I would really love to see how it feels in the, in the Caveco Sport. Yeah, I I agree with you. I I love it, and I don't mind the smell of the no. brass at I all. I thought it would it would actually deter me from writing with it, but it I like I don't notice it as much as I thought, and I love the patina. I so agree. Beautiful. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um. So I don't know if I would ever be set on a rigid number, but. I am being really intentional with what I purchased now because I kind of bought a little bit of everything just to see what I liked. Yeah. And I think because I think every, yeah, everything was online. Um, so I just acquired as much as I could to see what I liked and didn't like. That's usually how we start. I like almost everybody starts out like that. I feel like just trying around, shopping around for cheaper pens, beginner pens to see what nib size they like, what, what suits them mm -hmm. and I'm I'm recently noticing that I don't necessarily I shouldn't buy piston filler fountain pens anymore because I, I I love changing out the inks and so why would I want a fountain pen with a capacity that takes me months to empty <laughs> so, right yeah I have that same dilemma because I love the way Twisbees write um, but then I don't want to empty them because I have some here that, yeah. you know, I haven't emptied them because I don't want to lose the ink. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of stuck. <laughs> I'm kind of yeah. stuck with the ink. I don't want, because I don't want to empty them out. Yeah, I have one that I'm carrying into the next rotation. I inked it in January and it's still half full. And I'm like, oh, I'm <laughs> right. this never going to end. <laughs> right. But I'm going to end it, ink, em empty it out at the end of this coming month, like at the end of March. It, Either it's going to be used up or it's done. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay with losing that much. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I should actually be free to do that as well. Because otherwise I have, it becomes a bit of a liability or like a burden. I'm like, oh, I got to use up all this ink. I can't, I can't switch it out, you know, and therefore I haven't really used, I haven't used it though, um, because I've got my actual currently inked. But another philosophical question for yeah. you. Do you feel pressured to use all of the ink samples that you have in your stash in do fountain I, pens? Do I feel pressured? Like you said, you felt a little bit overwhelmed with the amount of ink samples that you have now mm -hmm. because you did so many swaps. Mm -hmm. um, but you sw I think you swatched them all on paper. Yeah. So is that enough usage of a sample or... Is it only used when you actually have it in a pen? Oh, yeah. My assumption is, is I think I will have used it if I had it, if I ink it up in a pen. Um, because I, I want to see if I like the ink. I mean, the goal is I would try the sample. Is it something that I would love to buy a bottle of? But if I really think it through, I don't know if I, gosh, if I, if I liked that ink so much and I buy a bottle, would I use the entire bottle? I don't know. I mean... But yeah, I think part of the part of the assumption for me is that I get to swatch it and that's really fun, but I don't really have it yet inked in. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I don't have it yet inked in a pen. So I I can't say that I've used it until I've inked it in a pen because I want to give the the ink a shot. You know, I want to give it a chance. But uh, yeah, it feels kind of overwhelming because already I've amassed like a big grocery bag and it's mm -hmm. organized in Ziploc bags. And I just don't know if I could even get through all of them. But yeah, how about yourself? Yeah, I, I, I've been thinking about that same thing, especially since I started the subscription to the Ink Flight, where you get seven samples every month, wow. and that adds up really quickly <laughs> too. And then also, I swapped inks with friends, and they sent one of them sent ten samples, so I wow. get ten at one point. And that makes it grow really fast. Um, I, I have been thinking that 
swatching them in my swatch book and just deciding if I like them or not is enough yeah. for me to allow them to come into my house and then um and then from there I can decide do I really want to put this into a pen is was was the swatching experience enough with this ink can it move on to a different person's house <laughs> or how am I going to deal with this but I am I feel actually much better since I started looking at okay ink samples I swatch them I appreciate them by swatching them and then it's okay <sighs> it's much better than thinking <laughs> thinking to oh my gosh, I haven't put this ink in a pen and I have had it for a year. That feels more realistic. And I even feel like a lightness on my shoulders thinking about that. You're absolutely right. I mean, also somebody commented, you have a YouTube channel. You do as a service by swatching those inks. I'm like, hmm, that's a nice way of thinking about this. <laughs> so, so here, if you need that permission, you are doing a service to the whole YouTube community, fountain pen community by swatching these inks. And then you're good. <laughs> Absolutely. That feels, that feels very right. It feels really good because yeah. It, it, just my, you know, just sharing with you, like what I was thinking, my perspective, it felt like a bit of a burden. Mm -hmm. Like I've got this bag full of inks that I'm never, I, I realistically, will I be able, be able to ever ink all of them up? Probably not. But just the idea of kind of welcoming, welcoming them into my channel home and sampling them, swatching them out is just enough um, yeah. because it's not realistic to try to ink every sample up and, um, it can, it's really overwhelming when you think about, you know, the moment that you just start to explore, I mean, even just the sailor ink studio lineup, you know, all the numbered inks from 100 to a thousand, you know, um, there's just so many. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah. I'm just thinking of when I'm, I'm, well, I lost my train of thought. Here it goes. Um, Last year, when I went to the San Francisco Pen Show, I took all the samples that I hadn't used and that, that I didn't feel drawn to with me and handed them out as goodie bags. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a really good way to just destash them. But I'm also thinking of just offering them like maybe once a year. Have I used this ink in the last year? Was I really, did I, was I tempted to use it? And if not, then maybe... I'm just going to give it to someone else. Yeah. And so I don't have to like think about this all the time. I'm just going to collect them for a while. And then if I haven't used them in a currently inked or ink rotation yet, then maybe I don't want to put them in a pen and that's okay too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's really freeing because I, I'm thinking about some of the bottles of ink that I already have. You know, I haven't been, yeah, I know that's another <laughs> conversation. Like I, I've already committed, I've already committed to these bottles of ink because I already liked them. They've mm -hmm. kind of passed through, I won't even say a rigorous examination. They've passed through some of the initial tests where I've loved them so much that I wanted a bottle. And a lot of them have been untapped because there are so many ink samples that I'm trying, but what if I do the due diligence and do all the swatching of the ink samples release them and really just commit to the bottles that I already have that um, might work as well yeah. yeah I've been thinking of yeah maybe I just need to use maybe I just need to give away samples of the bottles that I have so that I don't have to have the pressure of 50 milliliters but maybe now there's only 15 left or so right 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 and that's been the lovely part of being in this community too, is, you know, through the ink swaps and just meeting other folks on the channel or even on Instagram, being able to connect with them and swap inks or just share some of the inks that I already have. Um, and the, the pen pal, that's just the pen pal community. That's just like yes. another mm -hmm. way of being able to connect with folks. Um, and so it's that's a good idea. To use your fountain pens too. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So are you pen palling as well? Is that something that, yes. oh. Oh, yeah. I'm, but I'm so far behind. I'm, Me too. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on 
letters or replying to letters that I received in November, mm. but I'm slowly working my way through it. And, but it's a lot of fun. So I'm, I'm, I'm not really thinking too much about how the other person might feel mm -hmm. <laughs> because they haven't received a reply. I'm trying to be very open about the fact that I, I will reply just not tomorrow. And so when they send a letter, they already know that it's going to take a while until I reply. So yeah. I hope that helps. <laughs> Snail mail for sure. Yes, yeah. For sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think are you do you have anything that you want to share any more? No. I think we feel I feel like we were at the end of our conversation kind kind of and yeah. It would be a good point to just wrap this up and say say goodbye. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then thanks everyone for watching and maybe listening. We really appreciate that you stuck with us for this this time. And if you have anything to add, if you want to reply to all of those uh, questions, please feel free to leave comments on either of our videos and make your own. We would love to hear your thoughts on all of those questions. And yeah, maybe we can continue this conversation at a later date as well. Sounds great. Thanks so much for having me. It was really fun. Okay. I will see you soon online. Yeah, Bye. sounds good. Take care. Bye.